Today we are going to see about deglutition. This is important from an exam point of view because it has been asked multiple times as short note. Like explain the stages of deglutition, explain the second stage of deglutition and also as physiological basis questions like deglutition apnea. So we will see how to approach this question for an exam, right? So you can start off with the definition of deglutition which is deglutition or swallowing refers to the passage of food from the oral cavity to the stomach, okay? And it has three phases which are oral phase, pharyngeal phase and esophageal phase. Now we have to know in detail about each of these phases. So first is the oral phase and this is the voluntary phase, okay? And it occurs less than 0.3 seconds. It is during this phase that the tongue pushes a footballer to the back of the mouth, right? So suppose this is the outline of your of our face. This is the hard palate and this is the tongue. So during this phase, and by the way, this is the uh, esophagus and the bolus of foot is here, okay? So the tongue will push the bolus of the foot to the back of the mouth. And that is the first phase, which is the oral phase. So next we've got the pharyngeal phase. So it's an involuntary phase which takes less than two seconds and it is produced by the swallowing reflex. That is why it is involuntary. So we have to know more about the swallowing reflex. See, when the bolus of food reaches the back of the mouth, there are receptors here which will get activated. Okay, these are the mechanoreceptors that are present in the pharyngeal region which get activated and this in turn will send the impulses via the nerves present there like the glossopharyngeal nerve the trigeminal nerve as well as the vagus nerve okay it will stimulate all these nerves and these nerves in turn will cause stimulation of the swallowing center or the deglutition center and where is the deglutition center present it is present in the medulla or the lower pons this once it reaches these impulses reaches the swallowing center then the swallowing center will produce different impulses via different arc which includes these nerves, that is trigeminal, vagus and all, right? So this, the, once the impulses reach back, it will cause movement of these pharyngeal and the tongue musculature. That is how swallowing takes place, right? So here you can see this, the, when the bolus reaches here, the mechanoreceptors will be activated. This uh, uh, transmits the impulses via these three nerves, which are trigeminal, glossopharyngeal and vagus. This in turn will stimulate the swallowing center which send different impulses back to the pharynx as well as the tongue via these nerves itself. Okay. So now we'll see the steps again. So the receptors present were the mechanoreceptors that are present around the opening of the pharynx. The afferent arc consists of the three nerves, trigeminal, glossopharyngeal and the vagus. In turn, they reach the deglutition center which is located in the medulla and the lower pons. And the different arc consists of the nerves activating these pharyngeal musculature and tongue. Okay. So when this different impulses reaches this musculature, what all happens? So these should come under the events during pharyngeal phase. See, we know that the bolus of food should go into the esophagus, right? It should not go forward or back into the oral cavity. It should not go up into the nasal cavity and it should not go down into the respiratory cavity okay so the during swallowing there will be movements so that all these other cavities will be shut off and only the esophageal root will be opened up so first in order to cut off the oral cavity what happens is the posterior pillars of the fossas will be approximated so that the borders will not go back into the oral cavity next to cut off the nasal cavity the upward movement of the soft palate Will be there so see here you can see that this is a soft palate so during deglutition the soft palate will attain a more horizontal or an upward movement will be there so that the bolus will not go up into the nasal cavity next we have to shut off the respiratory or the laryngeal cavity right so the larynx and the airway is shut off and for that the vocal cords will be approximated so during that time, there will be a temporary stoppage of breathing and that is called deglutition apnea. Okay. So the vocal cords will be approximated. The breathing will stop temporarily and that is called deglutition apnea. Not only that, the epiglottis will swing backwards. So see here, you can see that this is the epiglottis. 
This will swing backwards so that the bolus will not move into the respiratory tract or into the larynx. Okay, the epiglottis will act like a door there. Right? Next, we have to open up the esophagus. So, to open up the esophagus, two movements will occur. One, the larynx will be pulled upward and anteriorly. See, this is the larynx here. This will be pulled upward and anteriorly. So, that what happens? This opening, here is the upper esophageal sphincter. This will be opened up. Not only that, the upper esophageal sphincter itself will open up. Right? So, two movements that will open up the esophagus here. One, there will be movement of larynx upward and anteriorly. Two, the upper esophageal sphincter will be opened up. And thus, the route for the bolus to go will be clear. Right? So, these are the things that occur during the second phase or the pharyngeal phase of the deglutition. Next, so, next is the esophageal phase. So, during this time, the bolus which has reached, which has crossed the upper esophageal sphincter now will be propelled from the upper part of the esophagus to the stomach. And how does this happen? That is because we have got two factors. One is esophageal peristalsis and second is the gravity. Right? Now, there are two types of esophageal peristalsis. One is a primary esophageal peristalsis and second is a secondary esophageal peristalsis. So, we will see what they are. The first one is a primary esophageal peristalsis. So, this is initiated by a swallowing reflex. Okay? So, just that, that wave of swallowing reflex will initiate this primary esophageal peristalsis and this will cause the bolus to go down through the esophagus. So, the rate of this is around 3 to 4 cm per second and it is coordinated by the vagal fibers that emerge from the swallowing center. See, remember in deglutition reflex, we had said that we've got this vagus nerve, which has got fibers all down along, right? So, these vagal fibers will coordinate this movement or this peristal primary esophageal peristalsis. Next, we've got secondary esophageal peristalsis. So, what are secondary esophageal peristalsis? This is produced when the primary peristaltic wave fails to move all the food that has entered the esophagus into the stomach. See, suppose the primary peristalsis could not let all the food into the stomach, then we have the secondary esophageal peristalsis. Now, this is initiated by distension of, of the wall. See, suppose this is the uh, structure of the esophagus. See, suppose we've got a block here or suppose the food has not yet reached the stomach. So, what will happen? There will be distension of the wall here. And this in turn will stimulate our intrinsic nervous system and that will stimulate the secondary esophageal peristalsis. So, with the secondary esophageal peristalsis, all the bolus will reach the stomach. So, this is how food reaches from the oral cavity to the stomach. Okay. So, that will complete your answer. You also have to write about some applied aspects like what will happen if there is abolition of deglutition reflex. What will happen? There will be regurgitation of food. The food will come backward. Then what is meant by aerophagia? Aerophagia means air will enter the stomach and this is this happens when there is a low tone of the lower esophageal sphincter. We can also mention about ecclesia cardia which is a disease in which the low, lower esophageal sphincter fail to relax. So here again the esophagus will be dilated. And finally you have GERD which is gastroesophageal reflex disease which again is due to incompetence of Low, low esophageal sphincter so that the stomach contents will come up into the esophagus. So, these are some applied aspects that, can, that you can write when deglutition is asked as a short note. So, to summarize, you can start with the definition. You can write about the phases which, in, which should include the oral phase, the pharyngeal phase in which you can draw this diagram of swallowing reflex and also the events that happen during swallowing and then you can mention about the esophageal phase and write some applied aspects. So I hope this concept is clear. Thank you.